Proportional versus non-proportional relationships. I want you to pause the video and I want you to write down just this top part here, the situation and the table that matches the situation. So pause, copy this down. Silas is a personal trainer at the gym. You probably weren't aware of that. Um, in addition to his salary, he receives a bonus for each client he sees. The following table shows the relationship between number of clients and the amount of bonus pay. So you can see that uh, clients will, when we graph it, will be represented by X on our um, graph and bonus will be represented by Y. When he has one client, he gets $45. When he has two clients, he gets 90 and so on and so forth. So I want you to write down this situation, the table, and then I want you to graph it on your grid paper. All right, so after you've graphed it, you should have something that looks like my graph. Maybe your scale was a little bit different. That's fine. Um, notice uh, a good graph has a, um, a title. It has the x-axis labeled, and it also has the y-axis labeled. Our clients are on the x-axis because they are the independent variable. That is, they are the independent var variable. They stand alone. The bonus is on the y-axis because those are the, uh, that is the dependent variable. The bonus pay depends on the number of clients. So you just have to think about what depends on what. So clients determines the bonus pay or the bonus pay depends on the number of clients. So once you have graphed it, then I want you to go ahead and draw your line through the, um, the points on your graph. All right, now I want you to pay attention to what I've written right here. This graph represents a proportional relationship. It forms a straight line, we call that a linear relationship, that goes through the origin. It goes through the origin. In other words, if Silas doesn't have any clients, then he's not going to receive any bonus pay. Then, as one value changes, the other value changes at the same rate. That's important. That's called direct variation. And equations for proportional relationships can be written as y equals kx. And if you will recall from the math lab, k is the slope. So what I would like you to do is write the equation for um, this line, y equals kx. So let's go back up here and let's recall that at one client, um, so the point 145, uh, we could choose 145 and then we could choose 290 to determine our slope. So what happens? We go up 45 and we go over 1. So our slope is 45 over 1. That is our slope. So the way we would write this equation would be y equals 45 times x. And doesn't that make sense? Because when you put in, let's say we put in 0 for y, uh, what is um, our 0, uh, what is going to be our value of x? 0. And doesn't 0 equal 0? Or we could also, um, let's say we wanted to find out what our y is. y equals, uh, let's put in 45 for k times, let's put in 2 for x. So when x is 2, what is y? y was 90. For two clients, he made $90. So your equation can be written as y equals 45x. So now I want you to look at this next situation and the graph that matches it. And I want you to determine if you think that it describes a proportional relationship and think about why or why not. So here is the situation. The daycare at Silas's gym charges $3 per child plus a one-time fee of $6. So um, we have the number of children here and the dollars. 
So we can see that for one child, uh, that would be $9. For two children, that would be $12 and so on. So I want you to look at this and just decide again, is this a proportional relationship? Think about if the line passes through the origin, whether or not the cost varies directly with the number of children. Can you write an equation in the form of y equals kx? And what would be the equation of the line? And we will discuss tomorrow.